In this video, we're going to look at a few ways to get more power out of your solar panels, and surprisingly why that may not always be the best thing to do. Almost 10 years ago, I started building my solar energy backup system. I have 15 of these 160 watt panels, as well as 12 200 watt panels for a total of 4,800 watts. So, how much power am I getting? So this is mid-morning and it's making a little over 3,000 kilowatts. So from 4,800 watts of panels, I'm getting anywhere from 73% of the rated value to as little as 56% in the wintertime. It's important to remember that that rated wattage of a panel is based on perfect laboratory conditions which do not happen out in the real world. In addition, there's a number of issues that can lower output wattage. One of the most important considerations is the tilt of the solar panels in relationship to the seasonal position of the sun. We are going to use what's called the zenith angle, which puts zero degrees straight up and 90 degrees at the horizon. Here in sunny Florida, the sun is at 6 degrees at its highest in the summer, and my panels are just slightly off from that at 8.7. However, in the winter, the sun is down at 52 degrees, but my panels are still aimed at 8.7. My panels are producing about 500 kilowatt hours in January and February. And then they produce more and more each month as the sun climbs higher in the sky as we approach summer. And then it begins to drop off, even though we would predict a curve that looks more like this due to the predictable change of the sun's angle. Instead, we see these big drop-offs of power. Because this time of year, we have thunderstorms almost every afternoon. So solar energy drops, of course, way down during those. Now, it's usually suggested that you aim your panels to the halfway point between the summer and the winter angle. And in my case, that would be around 29 degrees. So what would happen if I changed the angle of my panels? To find out, I'm going to use this calculator at the National Renewable Energy Lab's website. I'll put the link down below. You enter your address in this box, fill out information about your PV panels, and here I can enter different tilt angles for my panels to get different results. The orange line is based on the actual angle that my panels are at. And this blue line is the prediction if I change the angle of the panel to the 29 degree tilt. In the early months of the year, the 29 degree angle would produce more power. It would also produce more power in the last few months of the year. But from April to August, my existing angle does better. Averaged out over the whole year, I would gain 3.5% by changing the angle to the 29 degree tilt. You can get even more gains by using a variable tilt rack mount and changing the tilt of the panels for each season. So in the summer, my panels would be aimed at 6 degrees, in the spring and the fall at 29, and in the winter, way down at 52. We'll use the National Renewable Energy Lab's website to predict the adjustable tilt numbers in blue. So it makes sense that we'll gain energy in the winter months of the year because now the panels are following the tilt of the sun. And since my panels are already aimed for the summer months, there's not much change there. We gain quite a bit of energy by changing the tilt in the fall and again in the winter. In fact, 8.4% gains for the whole year. So why did I choose to leave my panels aimed at 9 degrees, which is great for the summer months, not so much for the winter months. Well, it's hot down here in Florida in the summer. We have pretty mild winters, but we use a lot more energy for AC cooling. I wanted to mount these panels in such a way they could handle the high winds that we get, not only with hurricanes, but also just in these microbursts at the beginning of thunderstorms, we can get 60 mile an hour winds. So by mounting these panels nearly flat at nine degrees and using concrete blocks to keep the wind from getting under the panels, they can tolerate some very high wind loads. If you wanted really big gains, you wouldn't just follow the sun through the seasons, but rather you would actually follow the sun in its path through the sky every day. 
as the sun starts moving higher, you see the number of watts come up also. And around uh, 9 o'clock here, we're producing a kilowatt and a half. But most of the energy is produced in the middle few hours of the day and then tapers off in the evening. Solar trackers provide much more energy by simply following the sun's path through the sky every day. This is an animation of a one-axis tracker, and this is a two-axis version, which provides even more solar power. Trackers can provide up to 40% more energy than a standard fixed rack. However, they're more expensive and require more maintenance. So you have to calculate the return on investment. That wraps it up for this video. See you in the next one.